was at the world premiere of An Inconvenient Truth at Sundance in 06. I didn't know about climate change. I really didn't. Um, which seems weird that I didn't because, you know, I thought I was fairly aware, but obviously I wasn't. I had bought a dryer for my clothes four or five months before I started the project. And I didn't think to look, was it Energy Star or Efficient or any of that stuff. I was just looking for the cheapest one. And that's really important for me to remember as I'm making the film, because that's the normal view. Just get me the cheapest thing and let me get going. That's what I expected. I expected feedback to be different in, in other countries than the U.S. because I expected people to say, oh, this is just a U.S. story. It doesn't apply to us. And I'm not getting that. People expect people to say that, but the people who are seeing it don't say it. We screened it at a small school outside of Frankfurt. And they were just with me. You know, they didn't say, hey, this isn't a German story. We don't want to hear it. They were just asking questions. They were inspired and they went with it. We start the film as climate change is real. Here's what can be done about it. What we didn't know, what we didn't know until we were filming, we met people like Bernie Carl, was that there's a lot of people who don't think climate change is real or that don't think climate change is caused by humans. Yet, they like clean air, they like clean water, they hate waste. So I realized that there was a big push that you had to believe in climate change or you weren't allowed in to the club. And that a lot of people were being excluded. And it was stupid. Because there's a hell of a lot of people who don't think humans are causing climate change, but they're going to do things to solve it. And I say, all hands on deck, let's not make that one question the way you get, it, you get into the club by whether you believe in climate change or not. Are you making the air cleaner? Are you making the water cleaner? Are you making energy cleaner? Are you wasting less? You're welcome. And that is, is what has been really powerful about the people in our film, the way we structured our film, and the response the film's getting. I mean, I have skeptics at every screening, and they all come up and say, now this is something I can do. Every one of them. They want this in schools. The story that we found that's going to do the most for the planet in the shortest amount of time, that's still not being talked about, which is blowing my mind, which is now another job that I, I feel we can take on, is the whole issue of grazing, the grazing lands and organic farming. Um, but I think it's going to be easier to get the grazing lands on board before we get all the farms organic. The, the power of the grasslands and the grazing lands to sequester carbon when properly maintained is enough to save us. It's enough to save the planet from a very different experience. I kind of feel like we're at the place now where this is what critical mass feels like before it hits. Everywhere I go, I land in a place where there's a lot of people working on clean energy and energy efficiency. A lot of minds, a lot of focus, meeting a lot of students who have decided to go down this road. A lot of college money, a lot of effort, a lot of individual companies, a lot of startups. And so, yeah, we're not there yet, but it would be like picking up the phone in 1970 and say, yeah, it's not, a, it's not an iPhone, right? You still picked up the phone, you still used the phone, you still did what it did, you still used its technology. And that's where we're at, I think, with wind and solar in the, in the efficiency of those two technologies, in geothermal. Um, I think that 10 years from now, we will, our minds will be blown.